Hello and welcome to the In the Virtual Mood podcast, where we discuss all things virtual in a safe space. I am your host, Imun Zamani, and this is episode three, Relationships in the Virtual Safety. I want to begin by thanking those of you who reached out to me after my last podcast. The support and sharing about your own grief truly means a lot to me. I recently watched an interview with the actress Regina King, and she said something so profound regarding the grief she has since losing her son. She said that grief is just love that has no place to go, and to me that is the best definition that I've heard. You know, the concern that I received reminds me of what I feel is one of the best parts of virtual spaces, access. There is access to more people from all over the globe that can make a difference in the lives of others. It surely doesn't mean that we're gonna be besties with everyone that we meet in the virtual. However, kind words, suggestions, and empathy from genuine people are like gold to me, and I'm sure with most of you as well. Perhaps that is due to those who visit virtual spaces feeling safe enough to be more supportive and empathetic without the pressure of being judged based upon physical appearance, disabilities, or financial status. Just to name a few things that we can deal with in our real lives. The only way that those things can affect us in the virtual is if we share that information. The most popular question that I'm asked about virtual spaces is dating. And now with the whole Who the Fuck Did I Marry series from Risa Tisa on TikTok, people are even more curious of how dating works in the virtual. First, I want to make sure that it is understood that there is a difference between dating online and dating in the virtual. With online dating, the goal is usually to meet face-to-face at some point. This was the goal with Risa Tisa and Legion, her now ex-husband. Dating in virtual spaces is just as it sounds. Individuals are dating in the virtual where they can pretty much do anything that they would in real life through avatars, excluding physical touch. And for most, it never goes beyond the virtual. There are many virtual residents that make it clear to those that they date that they do not want their virtual life to connect with their real life. And there's nothing wrong with that. Taking this position is probably the most proactive move that one can make when it comes to safety in the virtual. However, I know of quite a few people who ended up taking their virtual relationships into real life and it was the best thing that they ever did. I also know of some folks who wish they had never mixed the two. But listen, we have many episodes to go where I will be sharing more about all types of relationships in the virtual. I just feel I would be a poor virtual tour guide if I did not share some tips on being safe in the virtual first. Tips I have not always followed, and I've had one or two uncomfortable situations, which I take full responsibility for. When I was 14, I shed my so-called tomboy identity. I wanted to interact with boys outside of playing basketball. Now, I wasn't ready for anything adult, I was ready for spending hours hogging the family phone, passing notes in school, wearing someone's jacket or ring, and meeting at the skating rink on Saturdays. Fortunately, I wasn't the only one that noticed. I remember my dad telling me that the older I got, the more he hated boys. So the only legal thing that my dad could do was to arm me with do's and don'ts, and I find it so amazing that some of his tips also work in virtual spaces as well. Now, please do not take my suggestions as me coming off as a person that hasn't made mistakes in the virtual. When I first logged into Second Life, it was like Saturday night at the skating rink all over again. I felt the same exhilarating freedom. I could be and do anything that I wanted, but I forgot about safety. So I want to make sure that any of you who do visit virtual spaces or plan to visit, that you put your virtual safety first now. Tip number one, use a fake name. My fake name didn't really help me much while I was still in school. That's because most of the time, the places where I would go, 
the kids in my neighborhood would go, also the kids at school. So imagine telling some kid that you didn't know that your name is Sean, and then someone from school runs up to you and blurts out your real name. Yeah, not a good look. However, when I became an adult and started going to clubs, the fake name thing was amazing. I just had to remember the answer to it. Applying this to virtual spaces is quite easy. The username that you select for your avatar is your fake name. Unless you want to be known by your real name in the virtual due to a business decision or whatever reason you choose, I would strongly suggest not using your real name if you don't want your real life and virtual life to connect. Number two, do not give out your real phone number. This worked very well for me in real life until everyone had a cell phone. I would be able to give random numbers and the guy wouldn't know until he got home that it wasn't my real number. Once cell phones became widely accessible, many guys will call a number as soon as the numbers are given to them and then comes the drama when it turns out not to be a real number. It shouldn't be this way. Everyone should be able to decline further interaction and there not be any harassment to the point where a woman feels she has to resort to using a fake name or a fake number. But we see far too many situations where ego and insecurities have led to women being hurt simply because they declined further interaction with someone that asked for their attention. There are now phone number alternatives that can be used in real life and the virtual. Companies like Zoom and Google provide virtual phone numbers so you don't have to use your real number. There is also voice in virtual spaces. So if using voice becomes a desire, you can follow along safely by using the voice option that is available in the virtual space of your choice. Number three, be vague when it comes to where you live, who you work for, and schools that you have attended or are attending. This can be a gray area because conversation is such a large part of being in virtual spaces. It can become so natural to share everything that's going on in your life that you need to vent about. Please try to be selective with who you share with. The rest of the tips that my dad provided me with were more so geared towards me defending myself if I did run into trouble. However, I can offer a few more tips that are geared towards the virtual. Do not give anyone your login information. If you decide to use apps like Skype and WhatsApp, please remember to use the security slide on your camera once you're done. And remember that if you do share real life photos, those images can be searched if you have used those same photos on social media or someone else has. It can be so easy to connect them back to your real life. Visiting virtual spaces has been and will continue to be taboo and a bad decision to a lot of people in the world. I'm not sharing these tips to add to that fear. The same people that do bad things in real life will also do bad things in the virtual. So just as we protect ourselves in real life, it is smart to do the same in the virtual. Your best defense is your intuition. If their energy isn't matching yours and something feels off, trust it. Also, I'm not against mixing the virtual life and the real life. I have a few people that I have met in Second Life that are now part of my real life. I trusted my intuition and it paid off. I couldn't even imagine my life without them right now. If you are someone that visits virtual spaces and have other tips, please share them. My comment section is open to you. And if you introduce anyone to virtual spaces, please make sure that you provide safety tips as one of the first lessons that you give as a virtual tour guide. As always, thank you so much for listening and take care until we meet again virtually.